Hello everyone and welcome to Deck Building Derezzed. I'm your host Code Marvelous and today I'm joined by Kenny, otherwise known as Simon Moon, who's a Netrunner player from New York who's had a lot of competitive success this season with DLR Max. Kenny, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, how you came to uh, have a tremendous showing with this deck at uh, Gen Con 2016. Yeah, so um, I'm from New York. I've been playing Netrunner for about a year and a half. Um, I started getting into it when I just was like getting it, starting to get wanted to play board games and always like been interested in magic, but none of my friends played and started reading about it. And then like I saw this other game called Netrunner and like board game geeks. And I was like, huh, that sounds cool. And I started watching a bunch of videos. I watched through like every single Team Covenant video. Like I finally committed to like um, playing it and I got my girlfriend to play with me and we played some and then I started going to meetups and just it all every, from there just just got real into it and haven't stopped and now here I am playing all yeah. the time. It's funny how that works. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, so tell me a little bit about this deck and how you came to settle on this deck as yeah. what you're going to... What you played for a lot of the competitive season, mm-hmm. but also specifically for Gen Con. So it all started when After Worlds, I like... I hadn't, I hadn't been paying that much attention, so I wasn't really expecting as much DLR Val as there had been. And I hadn't played it myself. I'd played it against it a little bit. And then I tri- finally tried it, and I really enjoyed it. I found it really interesting. Um, and I was playing it a ton after Worlds up until the um, errata, at which point I continued playing it for a little bit, but it really didn't feel good. It felt like the errata really destroyed that deck. And so I basically stopped playing DLR at all for a while. Um, and then at some point, I, you know, Min had made a DLR max deck, and I played it a little bit um after the mwl like on and off and it it didn't feel great it felt like it had a really bad matchup against yellow like astro was just too fast for you and they were too good at like scoring off of zero with like pad campaigns dripping and you just couldn't deal with it and then after the mwl2 happened i became interested again because it was a deck that just like hadn't been touched by the mwl you know potentially losing like one influence depend if you're running Faust. And so I was like, hey, right. it's a deck that hasn't been touched. Let's 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 see how it is. You know, I think it sells some problems, but we'll go for it. And I just found I just wasn't losing at all when I was playing it on Jinteki. And so I was like, all right, this feels good. And Erin, one of the things I found was the matchup against CTM was actually really good. Um, right. Because... You basically were fine taking all these tags, and all their money was in assets. And with the scrubbers, you would just trash everything, and like a single wireless net pavilion would protect it. And that was like a lot of people were saying that was the deck to beat. So I ran with yeah. it. And like three or four days before Gen Con, I was like talking to Dan. I was like, "Hey Dan, what are you playing as a runner?" And he's like, "I don't know." And I was like, "Try this." And he's like, "Okay." And then he played it, and then he won. So. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the the biggest things with this deck is is this deck fills a very similar mental slot for me as like um, Cambridge PE. It's that like when people haven't faced it in a while, mm. they like get rusty at the mindset of how to play against it. Yeah, like, when you're a core playing against a deck like this, you play completely different than you play against like all other runners. And it punishes mistakes extremely hard. Um, if you like watch watch my game against Dan in the grand finals of Gen Con, I think I basically made two big mistakes, and that was enough for me to lose the game. Um, you know, and I um, and it, you just it, you just like make a mistake, and you get siphoned, and then that changes into another siphon, and like you can never trash the DLRs, and you just lose. Um, so it's very punishing to any amount of improper play. Um, right. Yeah. It's fantastic. I, I I've always liked DLR. Mm-hmm. DLR has always been one of my my favorite like troll cards, for lack of a better way of putting it. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. because but 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 I think one of the things that's really fantastic about this deck and even the Val deck to a degree, which you know relied a lot on surprise factor, is is that it requires skilled piloting. Like if you can't pilot this deck, you just lose. Like. 
<laughs> if you pilot this deck improperly, it just does not work. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not like it's not like my old noise deck before J How came out that was just all one and two cost viruses. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Where yeah. it's just like you could put a monkey in a chair yeah. and tell him to put three cards down on the table every turn. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a surprisingly tricky deck for a deck that at its core is just like siphon them a bunch and then they can't trash your things and you win. You know, but it's 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 like that's like the basic strategy is very simple and sounds dumb and easy, but it's it's hard. You know. Yep. So let let's go through it. Yeah. Where do you want to start? Um, I think I'll start with the the DLR package. So this is your basic win condition: DLR, Fall Guy. Wireless Net Pavilion. Um, notably, even though there's a Wireless Net Pavilion um, errata, so it's unique, you still run three of them. I've seen some DLR lists not doing this, and I think it's a huge mistake. One of the things you'll find happens is because you can't get up to the giant multiple Wireless per Net Pavilion that increases your trash cost to eight, what happens is you want to continually install like a set of these, and then they'll trash everything, and then you'll install a new wireless net pavilion. And so it's very important to both find it early so you can go tag me right away. And the other thing that's important is you want to be able to install a second one if they trash it. So they don't just like trash through like two fall guys and trash a wireless net pavilion and then just trash everything and you can never get a board back. You usually at that point want to install another wireless net pavilion, which at that point is often backbreaking. Um, so that's here like basic win condition is install that and then use siphon. Um, so they can't, you know, to deny the money so they can't trash it. Um, and then basically Deja Vu mostly acts as additional copies of Siphon. Though occasionally you want to get back an important combo piece like Fall Guy or DLR or Wireless Net Pavilion if you really need it. Um, same old thing is, again, additional cop- copies of Siphon or... Siphon. Um, you know, okay, you'll need it for levy, and especially in, like, P matchups where your cards are going to get sniped from hand, you you want to, like, install and save one to make sure you get the levy off. Um, it also is occasionally used for retrieval run, um, which is basi- basically the breaker package is four icebreakers, um, and it's 90% about getting into land siphon. You know, this is a very siphon-heavy right. deck. You want to be always thinking about how I'm gonna, how am I gonna land siphon? Um, right. Bam is just so, yeah. Go ahead. Why don't we? Uh, why don't we just go through? We'll go through line by line. Why don't we start with the icebreakers? Yeah. All right. So we've got a corroder, which you mentioned in our prior discussion that this should be clippy now. Yeah, this should this should be changed to um, to clippy. It's just a straight upgrade. It works great with Max. There's not much else to yeah. say there. Um, it really it really works well with Max. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's useful because there's a lot of vanilla, um, which lets you lets you get through that when that's an ice that can often res after you've saved them to zero. Um, it's also used for turning wraparound into a one cost instead of a giant pain in the ass for Eater. Um, Eater is your just general purpose breaker for landing siphons. That's what it's all about. Just you install Eater, you have enough money, you siphon them. Fem is pretty it's pretty tricky. It's basically your generic like okay, either they have a Turing on HQ, it's a solution for that. It's a remote solution when they're two ice when they're two ice deep, you fem their inner ice and use DDoS. DDoS is a is another like is almost an icebreaker. It's like an icebreaker inside job trick that does a lot of work in this deck where you can use it to land early siphons and force multiple HQ ice early, which is a lot of, which really sort of puts them on the back foot tempo wise. Have you ever noticed that all of the really good cards have Adam Doyle as the illustrator? I have not. He's on DDoS. He's on eater. He's on medium. Mm -hmm. He's the guy who does the art where everything kind of looks like vapors. Mm, DDoS is some sweet art. I don't. I, I'm gonna be honest. I do not look at art very often on cards. I, I, I it was like I'd been playing for like a year before I actually looked at like RDI. And, um, you know, I got like a DLR. I know what that looks like because it's it's just the shape. But all the ice is, 
all the car, all the art is just shapes to me, um, shapes and colors. You don't have the. Uh, we need to get the uh, alt arts that Dan made, where it's the two cheeses. <laughs> from that's Morals. funny. That's that's good. Yeah. For a data leak. Mm-hmm. All right. So if we're gonna go up to events, because we don't have any hardware in this deck. Yeah. If we're gonna go up to events, we got two siphons. It's good. Yep. It's really good. Mm-hmm. This was like one of the original. Sky is falling. <laughs> this is the worst cards, and it continues mm-hmm. to be with us. Mm-hmm. Years later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Deja yeah. Vu, as I said, more siphons. Hacktivist was just, I um, I wanted, like, one more piece of tech against, like, either Museum decks or Asset Spam. And Jonas, who made the original DLR Val list, suggested to me the nice before, and I put it in without testing. And it turned out to be amazing. It got rid of a whole bunch of targeted marketing. Having one current that can do that is really good because... Max has a ton of built-in recursion with you have like three copies of Deja Vu, three copies of same old thing, and you have someone's draw that you can find it really quick that any time that if your opponent tries to like, oh, I'm going to target a marketing name and siphon, which is the best thing to name with targeting marketing against this deck um, because it sort of just destroys the whole money denial game plan. You can You're fi- also going to play it like nine times. Yeah, you can you can play you can find it play it. You'll win any current war. Um, even against like soul because you just don't steal an agenda and then just deal them out um, because and just play hacktivist enough to beat them. Um, right. iPad it's work- also worth noting. Yep. I'm sorry. It's also worth noting that on hacktivist, uh, it's a, just oppressive against controlling the message until they find a two one. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 you know it's. It's not. It's not like amazing in that matchup. I found, and like in the forty nine one, it's not amazing. And like the any sort of museum deck is insane. That's how I beat Kyle. Was I just I stuck hacktivist. You know, he paywalled me. I got it back, and it was you know trash like eight or nine cards over the course of the game, which was enough for me to beat him. I mean, he was on Gagarin. Right. Um, yeah. Then moving down, I've had worse. It's both kill protection and draw. You use it a lot to draw on this deck. You want to go fast. Because the more time they have, the more money they get, the better they are trashing everything. Um, inject, same thing. It's a ton of draw. You have four programs, so you're mostly hitting... It's mostly just a draw four. Um, right. Levy, it's resets. It's great value. You know, a, a great thing to do in this deck is to get down to the end of your deck, let them trash a bunch of stuff, and then levy. And then you'll, like, inject and, like, install two more fall guys, and your opponent just cries because it's, it's terrible and mean. Um, retrieval run. That's how it works, though. Yeah, retrieval run lets you get away with running only two eaters, and also um, helps you get you know combos great with fem. You know, a, a great a great thing that you do a lot is you'll like pop DDS retrieval run for fem onto H the inner ice on HQ, and then siphon with you know they have two ice on HQ. The first outer ones DDS, the inner ones fem, and it's great for that. Um, sure gamble yeah. and daily cast are the only non siphon money cards in this deck which yeah it, pretty good it's 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 enough you know your your money situation isn't great if you don't land siphons but the thing is you generally just need the corpse money situation to be worse than yours to win um, and you mostly need the money to pay for eater to land the first siphon that's your right that. And it's also worth noting that daily casts, you can drop them after you've gone tag me because on the priority list of things to trash, <laughs> yeah. this is very low. Yeah. And and oftentimes, even when I have a ton of money, they're really useful because for dodging closed accounts. Um, so like sometimes when I'll have like 10 money or something like that because I've landed a siphon, I'll be like, all right, even though... Or even like sometimes I'll have like 30 money and I'll still drop daily cast because it plays lets you play around closed accounts, which is nice. 3 DLR, right. um, it's your win condition, play three. Um, DDoS, it's a great card in this deck. It you know, helps you deny early score attempts. Spacton is like an inside job. Um, it lets you siphon really well. Uh, you know, because a key part of siphoning is like most of the really good players will plan around you siphoning them and will have a plan to res enough stuff that you don't get value from it. DDoS makes that even harder and forces them to commit more ice 
to R&D, which means it's harder for them to secure scoring agendas or scoring money. And, you know, it's just a great pressure card. Um, Fall right. Guy protects DLR. Simple. Um, yeah, I would say that this is actually a really big part of the win condition. Yeah. Yeah, if it wasn't for Fall Guy, I don't think you could build a big enough... Usually, usually your Fall Guy and to protect wireless net pavilion to keep it around longer to make your trash costs higher um that's like typically what you use small guy for um joshua right. b there's only two of them he's great but what i found was in a lot of matchups like ctm or sync get even though you go tag me and you want to go tag me you don't necessarily want to get an infinite amount of tags because it makes resistor a pain to break and it also lets them psycho beal which is one of your big loss conditions against ctm so I found okay. I found that two Joshua B was about right because he's really powerful in this deck. You know, getting a fifth click is amazing, but the drawback is very real in a lot of matchups. Um, and I think that's a mistake. But I've seen other people because we've got people in our meta and other people that I know who have tried this deck. I've tried their hands at it, and yeah, just going crazy with the tags early mm-hmm. can really come back to haunt you. Yeah. Um, it's. I think that's that's one of the common mistakes I see. And the other big mistake I see people make is not going tag me early enough and wanting to get like all the fall guys out. Um, but you really just want them to be trashing your stuff a lot because um, that buys you. That's free turns yeah. and they're spending money. Yeah, you, you know, every time they trash something, that's part of your plan. That's part. That's part of the denial. Even, you know, um, yeah. And then paparazzi, um, basically means you don't die to meat damage. I think two's the right amount. Um, you know, if there's more meat damage in the meta, I guess you can do it, but you couldn't find it with, like, Deja Vu. Uh, so that's good. You know, against, like, Wayland, you'll often be Deja Vuing for Paparazzi. And then once you get, like, your your whole, like, untrashable thing left, you basically just beat Wayland. They can't do anything. Uh, right. And it's worth noting that if you're not using Joshua B with the Paparazzi... When they trash it, you're not tagged anymore. Yeah, that's that. It, it's that it happens every once in a while. It's pretty spicy. Um, I'm yeah, because like, that'll really make a Wayland player very upset. Yeah, like oh, I can't kill <laughs> you, but you can still mill me. Doesn't it happens sometimes? Usually, usually you're going tags because you need to land siphons, and you don't want to be clearing that. Um, no. Same same old thing. You know, mostly more siphons. Occasionally levy. Occasionally retrieval run. I don't think I've ever used it for anything. Oh, and uh, Hacktivist Meeting. Oh, and I forgot to mention, Hacktivist Meeting should now be Rumor Mill. Rumor Mill is insane in this deck because it blanks Jackson, and it also blanks HQ Caprice, which is one of the strongest cards against this. Because you... Oh, I didn't even think about the Jackson play yeah. with this deck. That's dumb. Yeah, it's pretty It's pretty, <laughs> It's pretty. pretty stupid. Um, it also blanks <laughs> Muzam. It also blanks Muzam, so... That it really turns that matchup around. Um, yeah, it's it's Rumor Mill's a pretty dumb card. It should not have been printed. Um, continuing Scrubber. Um, there's there's still a lot of asset spam in the meta. You know, when I made this list, I started with two. Like two games in, was like it needs to be three. If you can protect Scrubber, you can just trash everything CTM throws out. You know, take some tags and. You can either protect it by clearing tags, or if you drop a wireless in that pavilion, oftentimes CTM is just incapable of trashing everything. Um, wireless right. in that pavilion, again, talked about it a little bit earlier. It's part of your win con, makes things really hard to trash. You need three because you need to be able to find it immediately, and you want to be install, install one if your other one gets trashed. Um, so yeah. I think... I think we've covered basically everything. Um, was there any any questions you had on anything? Uh, no, not really. I guess my only um, the only real question that I have is is you know now that this deck has been out and you and Dan have had the competitive success with it, are you more concerned about the all seeing eye being slotted? Are you not concerned about it? Like, tell me a little bit about. Okay. The all-seeing eye. Because originally, one of the big things with the Val list was that Val's bad publicity insulated you mm-hmm. from the all-seeing eye. Yeah, so 
I, uh, I've seen a lot. I, when I originally started trying this, I had a frame job in it, and I also tried activist support, and I found that I just never wanted to play there with them, or that I would play activist support, they'd get a tag, and then they all see an eye me, and the, the bad pub wouldn't get there in time. Um, and then what I ended up finding was all the decks that could play all C and I, which were basically yellow decks where it made sense. CTM, because CTM was so bad at following it up, they would play all C and I, you would like fall guy for a wireless net pavilion, fall guy for a, a DLR to keep those. And they would have like four credits anyway, and they just won't be able to trash anything. Or you just like install new stuff and, and you'd still be in great shape, and it just didn't do anything. Or it'd be Sync. And Sync, honestly, Sync's ability is better than um, all and i They just flip and trash everything, and it's it's pretty rough. Um, and I guess you can splash it outside of Faction, but I, I think that DLR still hasn't been seen enough um, play to justify that. You know, I haven't seen a tournament where the, it's been more than, like, I don't know, like five or six people playing it. I don't, I don't know what it was at at UK. I heard some, but there's only one in the top cut, and and you know, tr- splashing for all C and I, especially now in the post MWL worlds, is like rough because it only does something in that matchup. You know, right? You're never yeah. using all C and I. You know, if you're if you're um, ETF. <laughs> I guess I guess the the thing is I still think freelancer is probably a better splash for like ETF because that gives you enough that you're gonna be able to trash everything, um, you know. Right. If so, if somebody happens to go tag me, you're like freelancer are the two yeah. most important things. And it doesn't it doesn't cost influence. And against against this, you know, it's worth eight credits, which is in, as Not long as insignificant. you're as long as you're playing well, it's gonna be enough that you can trash everything anyway. Um, right. Right, and that, you keep referencing the just that uh, this is a surprisingly um, kind of bean county deck, yeah. where it's all about it's all about the math. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I guess I guess that's true. Um, you know, you're like, okay. There's a lot of times where you'd be like, okay, um, they can click up to three, and then I want to siphon them because that gives me a whole nother turn before they can even trash anything. Yeah, there's, it's right, but yeah, the high level, as you said, it seems simple, but it's actually got some, you know, kind of nuances of piloting. So why don't we go ahead? We'll take it on gen- competitive Gentechi, and we'll see how we do. Yep. Ke- Kenny, thank you very much for coming on the channel, man. Yeah, I really yeah, it's been it. great. I'm, I'm glad to talk about this this deck and ruin ruin more people's days. Bye. Yeah, see, seems good. Yeah. That's what we're all here for. Yeah. The fun police, man. Yeah. The fun police. Uh, everybody, you can find Kenny as Simon Moon. Basically, everywhere Netrunner <laughs> content exists. Yeah. Um, um, I hang out on the Stimhack Slack a lot. That's that's probably the best, my most active Netrunner area right now. Or yeah. just come to New York. Yeah, that too. You can just swing by. Give him a shout out on the Netrunner Geeks yeah. or something. Yeah, I'll, I'll show up. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, Kenny, thank you very much. And to all of you watching at home, until we see you again, always be running.